Germany, how can I say it? It's, uh, it's a learning curve for me to be able to come to Germany and uh, cook my food, but to be able to communicate with people as well and teach them about uh, what we have back in New Zealand as an ingredient, which is um, what I do as a chef. I also go out and harvest and forage for uh, ingredients so that I can come over to Germany to show uh, chefs and other people here uh, what we have back in New Zealand. I'm, I'm, I'm honoured to be in Germany to do my style of cooking and food that we have back at home to bring over here so I feel very honoured to be in Germany cooking. Well, I see myself as being the first Māori chef uh, to be invited to Germany to host dinners like this tonight and what we've done in the past with the World Book Fair and the cooking class as well. So, um, yeah, I'm very honoured to be here. As my own boss, I cook um, in the bush at home. I take... Um, visitors, overseas tourists out into the bush and show them how to forage and gather food from the, um, from the natural environment and also I cook the food that we've gathered and give them a uh, five course meal similar to something that you'd get in a restaurant. I've been a chef for 30 years. I started cooking uh, when I was 15 years old as an apprentice in the New Zealand Army and I did 10 years in the army and when I came out with London City and Girls 706 Bar 1, 706 Bar 2 then I joined Air New Zealand and worked in the flight kitchen in first class, business class, right down to being a fishmonger, vegetables and then from there I opened my first restaurant which was a Cajun Creole restaurant and I liked the, uh, the mixing of spices and also Cajun and Creole has a traditional and also a modern style of cooking. So I learned all that and then I went moved back to Rotorua in New Zealand and I saw that there was nobody doing Māori food where we could infuse our ingredients into everyday cooking. So once again I wanted to have that same concept of having a traditional style and a contemporary style. Traditional, you stick to the rules contemporary it's wide open. In a Pakia kitchen okay you don't get the ingredients that um, we get as Māori because we have to go out and get it. You just cannot ring up a supplier and say I want to get 10 kilo of piko piko, 10 kilo of horopito, 10 kilo of kawakawa because they can't get it. So that's why I had to stop cooking for three years and go out and find where they were growing and also to be able to harvest sustainably so that it keeps coming back and also to be able to process it so we can turn them into herbs and spices. It took a long time for people to get used to it because it was a new ingredient or something new. They didn't know how to use it and um, they came and asked me and I said I can only give you the basics and you have to be able to go out and become creative with these herbs so that you can create a new flavour and that's what they've done. You know, the benefits are health, health and well-being because traditionally a lot of the herbs that we use uh, were used for health. So when you look at food like horopito pepper, okay, uh, traditionally it was used to combat eczema, eczema, okay, and also um, there's a kawakawa basil which is used to thin the blood and also good for your kidneys and your liver and if you had anything like a sore or a burn, okay, you can get the kawakawa, soak it in water, let it cool down and dab it on. What happens is that it speeds the healing process up, yeah. So that's, uh, that's the benefit of our herbs and I think um, you know, if we can show German people that it is natural, you don't need to take a pill, it, will, um, it is good for wealth and health and well-being.